instance, I want to compare that EC2 instance with Azure virtual machines. And while I'm doing that, I want to talk about areas. I want to talk about zones. I want to talk about placement groups and a lot of other things, right? So if you have any questions, uh, the last 10, 15 minutes, I will dedicate completely to questions, right? You can put down on the chat and I'm more than happy to answer. So let us start. So guys, first, very quickly, five minutes. I know that everybody knows why cloud, right? But still, uh, let me talk about it. So, um, you know, when you when someone asks me that, you know, that, okay, sir, we can always host a website on GoDaddy. We can always host a website on some normal server. I can always get a virtual machine, uh, you know, from my local vendor, you know, or from my local uh, hosting provider. What is so great about hosting on Azure? What is so great about hosting on AWS or cloud or wherever, right? Uh, so the basic thing here, you know, when you talk about uh, any cloud system is pay as you go, right? Means, for example, let us say if I go to GoDaddy and if I say, okay, I want to buy a virtual machine. So what GoDaddy does is, you know, he will actually charge you for the whole year. And let us say, if you want to go and upgrade your RAM, you have to again send them an email and then they will reply back and uh, they will say, okay, like we will charge you so much, right? Uh, <clears throat> you don't have that, that control directly to go and say that, I want to do it myself, right? I want to stop the service myself. So pay as you go. What, how much ever you use for that much you pay, right? So for example, I'll just, just just as example, I want to show you. For example, now this is the AWS cloud out here, or this is the Azure cloud. So I'll say, okay, I want to go and take a virtual machine. Fine, I can just go here and say, I want to take a virtual machine, or I want to go to Amazon and take EC2 right? Or I want to go and take SQL server for two days. Why not? Right. And uh, the best part here is that I can scale up. I can say that, okay, I have only 10 users. So I'll just take a basic SQL server plan or a basic Oracle plan. And then I will say, okay, now I'm growing, right? And I will just go and add more instances or I will add more scalability, right? So when you come to cloud, right, you know, the whole goal of the whole part of cloud is pay as you go, right? rental model must be that's the right word right okay so that is one part now the other question also which comes is that so pay as you go for what what things like you know because for example when you go to amazon out there you can take a virtual machine you can take a, a database you can take some storages you can host a website right so primarily you know if you look at cloud they have divided this whole thing into three parts right one is they say that someone can come and just take infrastructure infrastructure as a service remember huh? on in cloud this as a service is a very it's like a proverb actually out here in cloud so infrastructure as a service you know and platform as a service database as a service right so everything is as a service like a like a hotel service we take the service we use it and then we go away we don't care who's going to wash the dishes dishes you know from where they bought the vegetables you know we just take the service and we go away right so it is always as a service so there are various levels, you know, by which you can buy on cloud. First is infrastructure, right? Only the hardware part, right? So how do you take the hardware part? Definitely you don't get hardware to your home, right? So you go and you create a virtual machine. You go and you create an EC2 instance, right? In case of Amazon, you will go and say, okay, I want to create a Linux machine and I want to get 8 GB RAM. I want a Linux operating system on 8 GB RAM with 200 GB hard disk, right? So infrastructure as a service here, you go and you take the actual metal of metal as a service, you know, you can say, right? Uh, now, remember that if you're doing infrastructure as a service, that means you are responsible for everything. You are responsible for backups. You are responsible to create your web servers. You are responsible for all the things out there, right? Another way of buying the service is platform as a service, right? Uh, in a platform as a service, what happens is, for example, like let's say I, you know, if I if I if I, if I go to Amazon or AWS or Azure, I will say I want to take a Windows Server. I will go and I will create the IIS myself. I will host an SQL Server. I will buy the license. I will do everything, right, and so on, right. And why I have gone to Azure because their virtual machines are stronger. They have scalability, which I don't get in probably in other service providers, right. But now, rather than doing this, right, if I tell you that, okay. Just give your application, your web application, right? Just give your database. And we will figure out from a pool of 
servers, you know, where to go and host it. You don't have to go and create that uh, engine server or the Apache or IS. We will create it. We will create the directories. We will host it. We will do everything for you. That is called as platform as a service. So here, you know, we interact with the platform, right? That platform provides some kind of a <clears throat> automation and we don't worry about the internal details of the server, right? So this is the second level of buying, which is platform as a service. So one is infrastructure, right? Another one is platform. And the last one is, this is for the end users, I will say, uh, software as a service. You know, where you say, okay, here is Excel, right? Here is MS Office or here is Open Office. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to buy the license. The license is pay as you go, go log in. We don't have to worry about storages, backups. We'll take care of everything, right? So this is more for the end users who want to use pay as you go. This is more probably for devs and programmers, you know, uh, where they want to use that platform, right? And this last level is more, I don't like, uh, uh, this level is, you know, where you actually want to take control of everything, you know, where it's more like infrastructure level of thing, you know? So it depends, you know, where, at what level you want to go and, uh, take things from Amazon or take things from Azure, right? So that is, so remember, cloud is pay as you go, a rental model, different levels of buying, infrastructure level, platform level, software level, right? Okay. So that is the first part, you know, which I want to complete. So I've taken just 10 minutes for it. Now, <clears throat> so AWS, right, which is started by Amazon, right? Uh, and uh, this is again a cloud-based uh, service, you know, which is provided by Amazon out there. Now, remember that there are three big players, at least primarily to my mind. One is Amazon, one is Azure, uh, third one, I can say Google, right? They are trying to do it. Well, if you want to add fourth one, Alibaba, right? Somebody, some people also say, oh, like Alibaba is also having cloud, right? But the two big ones, the really two big ones, which I feel are the biggest competitors are AWS and Azure, right? If I think, you know, when it comes to open sources, I think AWS is the most preferred one. When it comes to Microsoft-based applications, Azure is the most preferred ones, right? Okay. Uh, but our goal here is to learn AWS. So first thing, you will say, okay, sir, like what about the free accounts? Like what is free in AWS and so on? So first thing, guys, when you go to AWS, right? Because that's the first thing what developers ask, right? What is free? They provide 12 months of free access service right which includes small levels of virtual machines some levels of storages right same is also with azure if you go and swipe your credit card they will provide you some core services some basic virtual machines which are free which you can use there is a limitation around it right azure does not have a free trial here you have a free trial you can try you can do a trial for a specific period of time but what azure does is actually it it gives you a dollar 200 dollar credit for I think 30 days or probably more than that also nowadays I'm seeing them. So you, you can have $200. You can use the Azure service, whatever you want, and you can test it, right? So here, you know, yes, you know, they have for a specific period of time here, they have a specific amount which they have given, right? So both of them will definitely ask for you for a credit card, right? And remember, guys, I would suggest to swipe the credit card. Why, you know, once you're done with your thing, right, you can just go and delete it. Okay, so if you look at the charges, you know, hardly they will be 1500 rupees. If you, if you use a lot, right, if you do a lot of practice, must be it'll go on AWS, must be it'll go to 1000 rupees maximum, right? So I would suggest you don't have to worry, swipe your card and get access, right? Don't try to go around these free accounts and so on. It is, uh, it is too much, you know, it's better to start learning, right? So here it is AWS, Amazon. I have already opened my account. I will not be teaching you how to open an account. It is damn simple. You have to just give your credit card information, give your company name, your address, and you are done, right? Now, once you get your access, right, there is something called as the AWS console. This AWS console is from where you go and you can take any access to that service, right? So I'll go and sign into the console out here. Sorry for this blue screen, which is coming. It is because of my computer, right? So here it is. You can see I'm in the AWS console out here. And there is a nice uh, search button out here. You can go and you can search uh, whatever service you want. For example, if you say, I want to go and take uh, virtual machines. Actually, you don't say virtual machines out here. You say EC2, that is a virtual servers, right? So you can go and you can take an EC2 service. At the left-hand side also, they have a nice menu out here. Uh, you know, 
by which you can go and you can take, you can go to a specific service and take a service, right? Okay. So <clears throat> point number one. So if you say that I want to go and take some service from AWS, right? Or even from Azure, right? The first important thing over here is to understand region and areas, right? So for example, if I say I want to take an EC2 service out here, like let us say, EC2 means a virtual server, okay? And I will say I want to take an EC2 service. What it does is whatever is that service, for that service, you will open up a dashboard. You can see this is a big dashboard out here, right? Now, when you say I will, I, you know, Azure and Amazon, right? Both of the cloud, you know, they have a lot of data centers, huge data centers, which are spread across the whole world, whole globe out there, right? So when you say, okay, if I create this EC2 instance, EC2, I can see a question out there. What does uh, EC2 stands for? EC2 stands for Elastic Computer Cloud. That There are two C in that, right? So this, uh, it says that if you want to go and, if you want to go and take a compute, compute means a CPU and a memory, right? You want to go and say, I want to take a CPU and a memory for a Linux machine, for a Windows machine, right? So they're given a name, Elastic. You know why Elastic? Because I can just go and increase the RAM. I can just go and downsize if I want, right? So this EC2, this two Cs out here stands for computer and cloud, right? So you get an elastic computer, right? Where you can upgrade your CPU, downgrade your CPU, upgrade your RAM and hard disk and so on, right? So that's why the name EC2. Um, I didn't like, I like that name, but it is too complicated. Like if you look at Azure, right? They're given a nice name here, virtual machines. That's it. Virtual machines out there. Uh, I would like to, <laughs> I would like to also give a, a kind of a disclaimer out here because I have been doing a lot of, lot of Microsoft, right? Probably my training can be bent towards Microsoft a bit, right? A bit, right? But I will try to be agnostic as far as possible. But, you know, as a human, right? When you do a certain thing for a long time, it is very much possible that you have that, how do you say it, you know? You become a bhakt, right? For some reason, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, that is there, but definitely uh, I I I like AWS. Uh, my four or five projects are hosted on AWS, right? And uh, I I love what they do, right? So here it is. So you can see now, <clears throat> but I will try to put a comparison because with that, you know, you can have in your mind that okay, like both of the services look like this, right? So um, uh, right. So there it is. You can see this is the EC2 dashboard. So that you know they call here EC2. They call here virtual machines, right? Now, when I say, okay, I want to go and create this elastic computer on the cloud, right? Or this uh, resource on the cloud. The first thing is where will, where it will get created? Will it get created in India, in Nepal, in US, where, right? So at the right, you can see there is something called as a region. So you can see there is, at the right, you can see there is something called as a region. Like I have chosen Asia Pacific, right? So very quickly, just let me give you a brief about this region and areas right <clears throat> uh, so at the top you have something called as geography right geography geography means like you know the sovereign of the country right like india has a border you know and us has a border right so that is a sovereign of the country right so there is first one is there are geographies there is nothing depicting geography in both of the clouds means you will not say this is the India geography. They don't talk about geography out there, right? But yes, inside the mind, you know, when they were designing these systems, right? Everybody has a geography in their mind, right? Inside the geography, you have uh, something called as the uh, areas, right? These areas are nothing but, you know, they are group of data centers which are very nearby into a specific region, right? So for example, over here, you can see, when I when I select at the right hand side, you can see these are my uh, uh, these are my you know uh, these are my regions you know where I can go ahead and I can I can go ahead and I can create my EC2 and so on right. If you go to Azure out here right when when you actually go to create any kind of virtual machines, these areas and regions actually are part of a drop down. So if you go out here, you will find that this is the region right. So like in, in case of AWS, the regions are here. In case of uh, Azure, the regions are like this, right? So you can see, you can select a region out here and then you can go and you can select other things out here, right? So this is called as a region out here. So I'll say, I want to go and create in Asia Pacific. So remember, uh, let, me, let me give this name as regions, I'm sorry, regions, right? 
So inside a region, so like you can have a South Mumbai region, you can have a Hyderabad region, or, or um, what do you call a, a North region or whatever, right? And inside the region, you have data centers, you know, which are buildings, must be buildings, must be only floors, you know, depending on how much budget they have allocated or what they have hired, right? You will have a group of data centers, right? And in each of these data centers, there will be racks, you know. So if I try, like, try to zoom here, so let us say this is, let us say this is one building inside that one building, this is one floor inside that one floor, this is one rack and inside that one rack must be, there are two racks like, you know, I'm just trying to imagine. So there is one server here, physical server here, and there is one server out here, right? So when you say that, okay, I want to go and create something, it will go and it will trickle down and we'll find out which is the best place and it will go and it will host it out here, right? So <clears throat> that's how. Uh, this uh, these regions are important right uh, okay so i've selected regions now if you say uh, so i'll go here now let me go and create a, a a simple virtual machine out here so i've selected mumbai region if you want to go and if you want to uh, there is also something called as zones as well so like for example let us say this is one group of data center inside this region there can be another group of data centers must be they are far away with some kilometers right if you say no, like I want to also go and specify zones as well. So there are zones as well. You can see in Amazon, you have zones. I can go to the zones and I can say, okay, India region, right? I want to go and do something in Calcutta. Must be, I want to go and do something in Mumbai. I've, you can see by default, what he has done is, you know, he knows that I'm sitting at this moment in Mumbai. He has just given me Mumbai as my availability zones. So remember, uh, there are there is a geography which does not have a direct mapping into the cloud system as such in both of them. Then there are regions and inside the regions, there are zones, right? The zones are decoupled physically. Means, for example, a, a Calcutta zone uh, will be physically decoupled from Delhi, definitely, right? And that is important because if something happens in Calcutta, then our, uh, our servers can quickly shift towards Delhi, right? So again, so that is again important out here. Okay. So at this moment, let me go and launch an instance. So I want to go and create an instance. So I'll just say launch an instance out here. Okay. Uh, what I can do is I can click from here as well. I like to click from here. So look at this. Uh, this is a this is a dashboard out here. So I'll say launch an instance. Right. And uh, I'll take Windows. Now everybody knows why I'm taking Windows, right? So I'll take Windows out here as a machine to log in. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> when it comes to uh, Amazon out here, right, you know, their instances have different, different types. And uh, these types are defined uh, as per, you know, as per what kind of, what kind of system you are having or what kind of load you are having. For example, if you see, you, if, you, if you see that I have a computer out here, a virtual machine or a computer, right, it has CPU. It has RAM, it has hard disk, right? Now, sometimes what happens is somebody will say, you know, my, my work is CPU in intensive. It needs a lot of CPU power, right? Then for that, you know, there is a specific type of virtual machine. You can select a specific type of instance you can select. You will say, no, no, like I need a lot of RAM. I'm doing some data analysis and so on. I need to load a lot of things in in-memory. So that means that you are asking for more. Then again, for this, there's a different type of instance. You will say, no, like I, I have to do a lot of input output. I save it to hard disk. I, I read from hard disk, right? So again, for this, you know, there are different type of instances, right? And someone will say, no, no, like in general, I want a very good machine, right? So yeah, there can be a, a general approach of saying that I want an in general machine, right? Also, sometimes, you know, you will say, no, like I want some accelerated machine. For example, uh, my graphic card, my, you know, I have a lot of graphic to be displayed like 3D model or something, you know, or game to be played, right? So probably it's like, you know, like the GPU, you want to have a good power of GPU, uh, graphic card power or some other accelerators it can be, right? So the different components of, of, a, of a physical machine, depending on that, you know, what they have done is, depending on that, what they have done is, they have created different, different, Amazon has created different, different kind of instances. So I'll just show you a, uh, don't be, don't try to be hard at this moment on it, right? Okay, but just try to understand that this is when you make a choice, right? You give a minute of a thought that 
where you stand right so you can see there is a general purpose out here there is so are you are you just like you want to just go and host a small website okay so that means that the cpu would be less that means that hard disk would be less it's a static website must be so that's a general purpose thing then you say no like i want to do a lot of machine learning i'm doing some processing batch processing must be you need a compute size right so each one of these machines out here you can see general purpose which is a arm this they, they start with the word a a1 a2 a3 series right mostly the compute ones will start with the word c if it is memory memory means you know r stands for ram right so r4 like you know or must be extreme ram it can be x1 or something right so these words out here you know uh, these letters out here denote denote your requirement or denote what what kind of instance you want to select storage is you know mostly so it's mostly h is for hard disk you know so the way i remember this is if a like you know arm machines we are talking about c for compute r for ram p for processing and h for hard disk right now remember that don't try to buy any one of these you know why because they keep changing their numbers right i'll just compare with azure in case of azure when you, when you go out here right their sizes are not like that their sizes are like a b c d e f g h very simple they have kept so it starts from the small free tier and then it goes gradually so here in case of azure if you are saying that i want to go and make a selection then you know you have to literally read actually i at least to my best knowledge i don't think they have to at least to my best knowledge i don't think they have classified saying this is for processor or something internally they write a statement which which you can you can say that this is processor intensive but they have not tried to create a subtle difference like amazon i like the way amazon has by fred you can see here a series light workload so this you can compare with general must be b1 you know where you have light workload but you know burst of cpu means suddenly the you need a high cpu and then whole day nothing and then suddenly at at some evening time you need a high cpu so here you know it's more like a b c d e f g h you know it it goes uh, so you have to literally read the text and decide whatever it is right even for amazon i would suggest please see the text don't try to keep in your mind you know your requirement in those sections like ram processor and so on but don't try to uh, buy hard anything so you can see here this small text out here t2 micro free one this is so if i go and select out here must be if i select the a type machines i can just scroll down t you can see a ones c for compute if you go down a b c d and then h for hard disk you can see some of these they have not enabled for me at this moment because at this moment i'm using this free credit card moments right so must be they have not enabled certain things right next thing is uh i said i want to create a windows virtual machine app set so what amazon does is amazon says we will have to create a public key and a private key because when you go into a windows virtual machine right it it will ask you for a username and a password so what they do is you know they create a um, a kind of a public key and a private key they give you that private key and when you launch first time the virtual machine right you have to give that private key and then only you will be able to change your password okay so i'll just go and create a new pair key out here i'll just say uh, something like this is for windows right and i will create uh, i'll say just create a pair and you can see there's a file which is getting downloaded down there and this file we have to keep it with our ourselves this is our private key uh, if you lose this file also it's okay you can always go uh, to the key pairs out here you can see i have created some key pairs out here you can get the file from there as well right so that's what the file is for now don't worry about the network settings uh, we'll talk about this later on right <coughs> and i will say launch the instance right we'll talk about other things in detail right as we go ahead right so launch the instance so there it is it is launching the instance out here also very quickly guys let me show you this is azure right the same kind of thing uh so i'll create a resource group okay interesting this i did not cover that in any cloud it's either amazon or it is either uh, azure right they create something called as a resource group here by default he has created a resource group a resource group is nothing but it is collection of azure or amazon uh, services for example you will say i need an sql server i need a database i need a virtual machine i need a firewall I... so you can take them and say group them and saying this is project a resource group right so so that's what the resource group out here is uh, remember uh, the, the way azure has created the ui and the way amazon has created 
they are a bit different in terms of the UX experience. For example, for area, I have to go here, but here it is right in front before me, right? Uh, but the concepts are all same. So I'll just create a virtual machine here as well. Remember there I have selected region from the right side. Here I just select region from here, right? You can see there is an availability zone. So I don't want availability zone for now, right? And I want also at this moment, a Windows server machine. Now remember that Azure is completely, they own Windows, right? So you can see here, as soon as I selected Windows, you said, okay, username and password. But in case of Amazon, this does not happen. Amazon, Amazon's, uh, Amazon says that, okay, I'm not agnostic with uh, Linux or Windows, right? So that's why they have created this PEM file, the public key and private key, right? So, but here, like, because this is all Microsoft, Microsoft, he will just say, he will not, he does not create any kind of private key and public key out here, okay? So other things are all same. I'll say review and create. And this is one instance over here. So you can see almost both of them are having the same features. So when, when it comes to services, right, you will find that both of them equivalently are technically capable, right? So I'll go out here. So let us go to Amazon out here. Let that virtual machine get launched. And uh, this is the instance out here. So I can just connect. So you can see that is the instance which is running. And uh, it is a T2 micro, small one, free one I have, right? And I'll just connect. You can, now you can go and you can create more instances if you want from here, right? So, uh, but at this moment, I don't want to. Right? So I'll just go and say connect, okay? And connect. Now, when you say connect out here, right? <clears throat> he will give you various options to connect. Now, one of the common way to connect a virtual machine is by using the remote desktop, RDP client, right? So I'll be going and downloading this remote desktop out here and I'll try to connect. So you can see the RDP file out here. I'll just try to connect, right? Uh, right, so you can see now, uh, I don't know the password, right? <laughs> because uh, he has created a password internally for me. So now here I have to get the password. See, little bit different it is because Amazon is very generic, right? He does not want to think that this is Windows or Linux, right? Which is very nice as a cloud thinking, right? But in case of Windows, you will not find like that. In case of Azure, if you go, we will directly connect, right? So I'll say, get me that password of admin. So I'll say, get password. He'll say, oh, get password. Can you provide me that public key and private key, which I've given to you? So I'll provide this, this thing out here must be, I think I can paste the contents out as well. So ah, my security is exposed, right? <laughs> so I'll just go and paste it out here. So I'm providing him the private key content. And with that, he will give me the password. And that is the password. I'll copy this. And now I'll try to reconnect. So by default administrator, remember over there, what happened? He, he gave me a option to put the username and password, but here by default, he has created administrator. And then I can start logging and other things are all same, right? So this is the AWS virtual machine, which is created in South Mumbai, I think, right? And it is in the region of Mumbai only at this moment, right? In the same way, if you go to Azure, the same thing you can see. Uh, but here, you know, we don't have that private key and public key, uh, which I think is fine. You know, like if I know the user ID and password, then right, what to think about it, right? So again, I'll, I can download the RDP file. I can connect. Uh, but remember here now, he'll not ask me for anything. You have created a username and a password. So he will just say, okay, go ahead, log in and start using the server, right? I like the Amazon security, you know why? Because uh, definitely that's the way it should be. You should have a, a solid negotiation before you enter into any kind of access, right? Uh, right. So this is the Amazon uh, virtual machine, which I have, and this is the Azure virtual machine, right? One statement which I want to make here specifically about uh, the Microsoft products on Amazon, right? From the cost perspective, right? Uh, and I would like to point out, I know that first thing, we cannot take all these statements for true and false over here, because for example, now this one here is belonging to Microsoft, right? But one thing is for sure that if you're taking Microsoft products on Amazon, it is four to five times costly. I, I think it is at least three times costly. Vice versa also, if you say, I want to go and take Red Hat Linux on Azure, it is minimally three times costly. That is, that is for sure. Like a lot of people ask me that, you know, okay, which is cheaper? It depends. 
right? So for example, if you see here, like AWS is definitely five times because Windows Server license is your internal license. So you can do a debit credit internally, right? But if you go here and if you say, I want to buy Oracle, if, if I understand Oracle last time, you know, for one of the companies I was doing, it was almost six times costly, right? So here is my thought process. You know, if you are doing Microsoft products, Azure is good, but if you are doing open source, right? I think, you know, Amazon has, that definitely has an upper hand, right? Okay, so <clears throat> uh, very quickly, what did we do, right? We talked about cloud, which is pay as you go. I will come to questions. I will start with questions for some, in some time. We talked about you can you can buy the services at various levels like you know infrastructure, platform, software, right? And then I started creating an EC2 instance, nothing but a virtual machine, and the same I mapped with the Azure virtual machine. I I talked about the different EC2 instances, or I'll rather I'll say I gave you a broader view of that how you should think about the EC2 instances. Remember, at the compute level, at the hard disk level, at the RAM level. Uh, at different levels, you know, you can think about this EC2 instances, right? And also I talked about regions. I'll not talk about areas here. This areas we'll talk later on. Regions and zones, right? Uh, so that is what is from my side. Okay. <clears throat> uh, before I uh, before I go ahead with questions, right? I want to talk about three things out here, right? And both Amazon and Azure, how they handle it, right? One of the One of the things, you know, why do we go to cloud? Because we want uh, to have a, a DR, a proper, we should have a good DR. We want fault tolerance. Uh, we want uh, high, you know, high availability, right? Uh, these three, four words out here, resilience, you know, resiliency, right? All of these words, you know, uh, we need to understand that difference. Because if you don't understand the difference, then we don't know what button to switch out there, right? So let me talk about this. And then I will show you the options of how to achieve this or how they are achieved for every service, right? First word is, first word is disaster recovery, DR. Another word is high availability. And the last one is fault tolerance. Now developers think that all of them are three are same, but they're absolutely very different, right? Uh, let us talk about disaster recovery. Disaster recovery is disaster recovery. You have, you have a flood, you have an earthquake, your data center is located somewhere, you know, and there's an earthquake out there, the complete data center comes down. DR means <coughs> it's not about just one or two machines. It is about the complete ecosystem. It is about people. It is about the building. It is about the administration, right? So when you say, uh, somebody says that I want to, I'm using cloud for doing a DR, then we are talking about very, very big thing out here, right? If you say a DR, that means we are talking about ecosystem and not just one or two virtual machines out here or one or two servers going down or hard disk going down this is this you know it's complete logistics it's it's a complete supply chain you know you need to replace that with a different place with a different city right so here you know it can be semi-automatic right and here it can take days or weeks you know to go live right so this is the dr so for this you know frankly uh you can have a dr plan with you but if you say that, no, like I want to have a real, real big DR and a proper DR on, on cloud, then remember it will cost for you. Means you will say, I have 10 servers here. I will create a 10 server backup also in US, right? I have, I have 10 people here. I have 10 people in US as well, right? So I think this is something which is, which I don't think that cloud will help you. It will help you to expedite, but it is not really a part of cloud. It is more also part of your internal process, right? So we'll leave this thing. Now let us come to machines. We say, no, no, no. I'm talking about my this one server, my two servers, right? Now that's the question then comes is that how much downtime, right? So this is very clear, guys. Disaster recovery is different. How much downtime you're looking at? If you say, no, no, my, I, I can't have any downtime, right? If you cannot have any downtime, no downtime, right? Right. That means you want, what is that? 99.99% .99 availability, right? Those kind of things. Then we are talking about fault tolerance. Fault tolerance means as soon as this goes down, another thing should come up. So here, what you will do, like as a mechanism must be, let's say if one virtual machine is there, you will create two virtual machines. You will create a redundant virtual machine. You will actually have some kind of a synchronization between them. You will have some kind of a mirroring between them, right? And when one thing goes bad, you will just switch to another thing. So this is fault tolerance. Here also again, now this is possible with Azure as well as with AWS. 
But yes, when you talk about fault tolerance out here, right? That means you have, you need to have two parallel systems running. They should be synchronized. The cost is high over here, right? Then you say, no, 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 like uh, it's okay. One hour of downtime, I will manage it. You know, it's okay to have some two hours of downtime, right? Which actually looks realistic. I know that I know that people are raising their eyebrows. Oh no, like my business cannot have downtime. For those kind of business, definitely you should have fault tolerance. But I also understand that there are many businesses out there who can wait for 10, 15 minutes. In that case, you know, we are talking about high availability. So here what you do is that you have a virtual machine or a website or a database, right? Which is running, right? This Remember, I'm using the word virtual machine. I'm using the word EC2 must be, but this can be any entity out here. But then what you will do is that you will say, okay, but we'll not have another server running. We'll not have another entity running. But anything happens bad here, we'll just spawn a very quick virtual machine or entity or database and it will start, right? But this, this is not running parallelly. Now, the, for that, you will use, I don't know, you will use Docker, you will use Kubernetes or, or you will use some load balancer, or, uh, sorry, a, a spot creator, right? Load balancer is different. Huh? Spot creator, that depends, you know, that how you want to spawn this. But the point is that this is not running parallelly. Here, like both of them are running parallelly. Why I'm talking about these three things, right? Because when you say that, okay, like I want fault tolerance, then you're talking about redundant systems. When you're saying, no, no, I want about high availability, then you're saying that, no, like I want to spawn a virtual machine very quickly, right? So the, the options of, of selecting those options, they change on the screen, right? So remember, huh? it is all about SLA also. Here, this also maps to the SLA saying, like the AWS can promise you for high availability, I will give you 99.90% guarantee. Means so within that time, I'll come up. If you're talking about fault tolerance, I'll talk about 99.99%, right? So here again, it's all about, you know, how much time you want the down period time, right? Now, you'll say, sir, like you talked so much, right? Now show me some options out here. So basically now what happens is like anywhere, like example, when you talk about Azure or AWS, right? They have these options out here. Let us talk about AWS here specifically. So if you go to here to the EC2, you can go and define various things. For example, you can go and you can define auto scaling. I'm just giving one example here, auto scaling. One thing we have already defined out here is, uh, one is auto scaling. One is you can also define zones. Look at the zones out here. At this moment, if you see, we have three zones. So means what? If something happens bad in this virtual machine, he will try to make a copy in the other zone as well. Right? So internally, you know, you will find that both of the clouds they try to uh, address this fault tolerance and uh, high availability, right? So today, guys, I'm just giving a brief idea of this. In the next class, I'll be talking more in detail that how these things are enabled, right? So for example, like when you talk about, about Azure, so Azure must be having, uh, uh, they also have areas, they also have regions, they also have zones, right? Uh, they also have availability set and so on. Uh, so over there, you can see availability and scaling. They have given a special link out here. So we'll say, okay, like availability, if if I have a fault, how you should react, right? Okay, <clears throat> so that was a small discussion. Remember, in the next class, we'll talk more about these options on EC2, right? So guys, I would like to just go to questions out here. Uh, I would like to go to questions and then come back must be and talk uh, more about AWS. So what we have done till now, we have created a simple EC2 instance. And we are running that EC2 instance out here. Okay. Uh, this is the EC2 instance. Okay. AMD free one. And this is the Azure instance, right? Okay. Any questions here? Let me start with questions, right? Okay. To RPO and RTO. Yeah, definitely they are. Bhavnesh, I agree, right? Okay. Let me start from top. Okay, let me start. Also, like questions, please. Uh, but if you don't have a credit card, I'm so sorry, right? You have to hunt for it then. You have to hunt for someone free. See, guys, you know, for knowledge, right? We should spend those 500,000 bucks. We go to a hotel and we spend so much, right? So, uh, okay. Okay, let me start from the top. I'm taking one one question. Okay, so here it is. Uh, okay, I'll start question. I'll I'll take quick quick questions, I guess you know. Uh, so yes. Uh, so let me. 
I would like to learn CI/CD with dotted application in AWS. Uh, okay, so question here is from uh, from Guru. Oh, you are my Guru. Okay, thank you very much. I thought your name is Guru. Okay, so basically, uh, uh, thank you very much. You know, for that respect, I would like to learn CI/CD with dotted application. If you want to do CI/CD for dotted applications and SQL Server applications, and which is Microsoft, please go and do Azure DevOps. Right? You can do by using Jenkins. Right? One is when you talk about open sources, but as you know, there's a differentiation. There's there's a clear differentiation I see out here. If you want to do for Java, etc., you go for Jenkins, right? If you want to do for open sources, surely Jenkins. But the way the tasks are organized in case of uh, Azure DevOps, right, it is very different. So please go and see the tutorial out there. Uh, basically, does learning AWS in search and help a developer or is it only for DevOps? So here's a question here. So I'm from a .NET background. Does learning AWS help? Absolutely, it will help you. See, having a knowledge of both the clouds, it definitely matters. Why, you know, if you see today, right, the world is trying to become more closer. Like, you know, I feel at least uh, at one moment of time, if you just do Java and Oracle, you are done. If you're just doing .NET and SQL Server, you are done, right? But now you, you can have Angular as a front end. You can have React, right? Somebody wants to uh, go and host on some uh, cheaper solutions, you know, so they try to negotiate. So I feel that having a knowledge of AWS definitely helps out, right? And what I feel is that if you know Azure, you can do AWS. If you know AWS, you can do Azure because many concepts are same. Many, many concepts are same out there, right? Uh, we don't have credit card yet. So MS2 have made similar categories. Absolutely. I'm a web developer with this and this. Let me go back. Sir, can you share the topics? Okay, can you share the topics you're going to go and cover? So very quickly, here's a question. So yes, so topics are here. Uh, today was a warm-up actually exercise. I wanted to just show you the login of Amazon and just show you how the UI looks like. But our topics are here. So here it is, guys. This is what I'm planning. Today, uh, I talked about introduction to cloud computing. I know my topics did not really match into these topics, right? Uh, I talked about regions and availability zone. I, I, I created EC2. But from the next lectures, right, we will go more in-depth into EC2. Right? For example, today I did not talk about uh, you know, AMI, you know, we have this, uh, we have this ready-made templates out there. So I did not talk about that, right? The images, the, 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 the machine images, right? Then we'll talk about the block store. We'll talk about uh, simple storages. So you can see there's a complete uh, tutorial. The complete list is given out here. I would like to make one point very clear, right? In my trainings, my trainings are very flexible. They keep on adding. For example, I start with some agenda. Then what happens is, some of our friends says, hey, like, why don't you do uh, show some demo on this? And then I add to my agenda and it keeps increasing. So I, and I think that, you know, when you're doing trainings like this, you know, which are like uh, trainings for seniors, right? You can go with a fixed agenda first, with a basic agenda must be. But I think there should be a flexibility by the trainer to expand because I also want to learn right at the end of the day. So definitely this is the basic one, right? How we are done for DevOps. Same way, I will start basic. But definitely, I don't know where I will go, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and definitely, I have my team out there who helps me. Uh, thankful to Bhavnesh, thankful to Guru, thankful to Khadak, everyone out there. Uh, whole week, they help me to practice. Whole week, they help me. So, if AWS is agnostic, uh, okay, let me take one one question. S sir, please take questions, yes. Today's day, I'll take questions, but later on, if AWS is agnostic, <clears throat> hang on. Uh, no, if you want a particular operating system, it it is like for example. So the question here is, if I want you are you are allowed to select a particular operating system, but AWS does not think like for example when I went and selected in Azure, he started popping me everything related to Windows. Okay, here is a username and password, but in case of AWS, he did not think about like that. Right. So if you go to AWS out here, he will allow you to choose. Definitely. He has to allow me to choose that what I want to create. So for example, if you remember when I selected the instances, I did select. So when I say launch instance out here, I have to, they have to give me an option to select uh, what I want. Right. So the select, the selection is there. Right. But what I'm saying is that that screen don't change. For example, if you go to uh, Azure, right, their screen starts changing, their field, field box starts changing because definitely they have, it is completely Microsoft agnostic, right? And you can see out here, uh, definitely different groups. As soon as you say it, Amazon, the first choice is Linux, right? 
but obvious. So you have a choice. Okay. Uh, let's move. Uh, guys, today I'll take some questions, I think, because last time also many people said you don't take questions. Hang on. But there are so many questions. Uh, right. Let me let me talk. Uh, code in .NET and Java, but for integration. Uh, right. I agree. <clears throat> So can you please explain uh, DR and FT again, right? Okay, let me see that. There's one good suggestion from here that FT and HA are directly related to the RPU and RTU. I agree, right? What I was trying to put here is a lame definition because many people even don't know RPU and RTU, right? A lame definition that when it comes to fault tolerance, what you should think as a developer, what extra you will be charged, right? So, okay, there's a, the, I don't know, like this was pretty clear, but there's a question here saying that, sir, can you please explain DR and FT and HA? See uh, that diagram out there, right? This is the diagram. So I'll just give one minute over here. I, I don't want that you should lag back. Uh, see, when you talk about DR, right? In DR, it's, it's more of a disaster, right? In that case, automation only will not work. Automation is there, but you also have to transport people from one place to another place. The whole data center has come down, right? So that is what is DR, right? When it comes to fault tolerance, that means that you don't you don't have any downtime. So at that time, you need to have two systems up. You need to invest on two systems. You have to pay more for two systems out there, right? In this case, you know, in case of high availability, you are okay with some downtime. So you have a server, but the other server, if it takes more, uh, takes a 10 minutes to come up, I'm okay with that downtime. So here, you know, we are talking about uh, creating the instance, the second instance quickly, copying the backup and making it ready, right? So the difference here is that more in terms of the downtime, uh, what you can look at, right? And I feel that the cloud, you know, is only at this area. Here cloud is there, you know, but it is very semi, semi kind of thing. But more on this area is where I find, find uh, automation can happen, right? FT and HA. Okay. Uh, I'm working in Angular. Do I need to first do DevOps before AWS? Okay, so here it is. Uh, uh, do I need to learn first DevOps? See, uh, guys, this uh, uh, first thing, you know, don't go on the whole market. The market is crazy. Like, if you don't know DevOps, you are stupid. They, they think so, right? If you don't know, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm like, that word is very harsh. But if you don't know Docker, oh, like, you don't know Docker? Or you don't know Kubernetes? What? Where are you, right? So if you're doing Angular, kudos, you're doing Angular or React, you're a programmer, first thing. You're kudos for that, right? Now, what you should do first, learning AWS or learning Azure has nothing to do with DevOps. DevOps is more of a build, automating the build, you know, trying to uh, connect, you know, the, the dev team and the operations team together, right? So you can learn both of them. I feel so isolatedly if you, if you, if you can put that ahead, right? There is a, there is a mapping where the DevOps says that go live on Azure, go live on Amazon, right? But I think both of them can be learned parallelly in an isolated way, okay? So, okay, so here's a question. I'll take some of the questions, right? So both two days are going for AWS. Yes, the coming Saturday and Sunday is both for AWS, right? But when I'm doing AWS, I will always try to point out what is there in Azure. Remember, many services are not having one-to-one -one mapping. For example, I'll tell you Azure App Service. There is no one-to-one -one mapping in case of AWS. There is, you know, but it is not like, like what we think out there, right? Uh, but yes, you know, many mappings like, you know, we have Lambda here in the same way you have serverless there. So many things you can map, the storages also you can map, right? But you'll find that many stuffs, you know, which are related to uh, Azure. So both two days I will do AWS. 80% focus will be on AWS, but that one link, one uh, image, you know, or one window will be open to show you. See, this is Azure. And for Azure, guys, please go and see all the Azure videos to learn in depth, right? I'll be not be showing demos. Today, I show <clears throat> I showed the Azure VM demo, but that is not possible from the next class. From the next class, it is pure AWS. Okay. Okay, let me take up some questions, you know, from our YouTube friends out there. I know that they are waiting and uh, must be, I'll just take up the questions from there. Okay. Sorry if your names are flashing here. I'm extremely sorry. 
to expose your personal information out there, right? Okay. Uh, someone, okay, let me see. Someone secure a DevOps job without a knowledge of Python. Someone can secure a DevOps. Okay, I'll take up this question. Huh? Uh, I know that today's session, you know, uh, once you are on YouTube live, you know, it becomes sometimes difficult, you know. So let me take up these questions because these questions are, I know that very basic, but for a personal, for a, from a personal perspective, I feel people get confused. See, frankly, DevOps to be done by an uh, a person who does not have a programming knowledge, it is difficult, frankly. Let me be very, let me clarify that. Okay, why? Because DevOps talks about build. It talks about automation. It talks about going live, creating servers, running script. Now, until you have not done any kind of compilation of programming, or if you have not done any kind of how, how the compiler works, how the production goes live, how the SQL scripts are executed, how the web servers are, I mean, like it is difficult to do, right? To write the DevOps pipeline, right? So answering that over there, the question, can someone secure a DevOps job without knowing a knowledge of a programming language? I think difficult. And what I feel is, what I feel is, and let, please correct me, for DevOps writing, at least for the pipeline writing, huh, writing the pipeline, I feel they will always take up a developer of that category, of that section. For example, if you're a Java guy, then you will, they will take that, that Java guy only has to go and write the pipeline. Who will understand Maven? Who will understand SQL? For a .NET guy, he understands MS Build, right? So I feel that, you know, I know that there are many people in the market who say that, no, no, you can, you can become a, from accountant, you can become a DevOps engineer. Must be you can become a DevOps engineer who can monitor that this pipeline failed, that failed, small, small things here and there, right? But frankly, creating that pipeline, understanding it, it is difficult, right? Which is the best of hosting through RDP or third-party app like good. So uh, I, uh, again, like which is the best type of hosting through RDP or third party? So money, uh, th there is nothing best. I feel that if it is Windows, go to Azure. If you're talking about Azure and Amazon, if you're saying Red Hat, etc., go to Amazon. Again, this question is very irrelevant, <clears throat> but can you suggest which clause is better? For .NET, yes. For .NET, thank you for, the, uh, for putting some more perspective to it. Azure. It would be cheaper, right? For Java, AWS. For Python, AWS. For, right, yes. You know, it was always Microsoft versus non-Microsoft. Only thing is from the offline, it has gone to cloud now. Uh, really, well, just for .NET programming, what to learn? If you're just doing .NET Adesh, just, just stick to Azure, right? But knowing AWS will definitely increment your salary. You can ask for a 30% of hike more, right? I'm a support engineer with three plus experience. I want to become a DevOps engineer, which is the best way. Money, again, I'm clarifying this, very important. If you want to become a DevOps engineer, first that D part of the dev, developer you have to become. I don't know why, like this question is flashed many times out there. And I know many people take these courses saying that you can become a DevOps engineer, even though you are not a developer. I feel that is a myth. There are two parts of the DevOps. I don't know why so many questions on DevOps, it's cloud. Dev and operations. So that it is connecting the develop development team and the operations. So if you don't know development part of it, at least the basic part of it, like how the compiler works, of that technology, it is difficult to write the pipeline. It is difficult to configure things. So you have to do a little bit of development in order to get into DevOps, right? Uh, so that's that's my answer to that. Okay, very good, very good question out from Pratap here. I'll take this. Few of organizations are using AWS card, even though price is higher. Does really AWS give an extra add-on? I don't think Pratap for this. I, I am I'm not aware of it. If it gives something extra add-ons. I'm not aware of it, right? But if you're using a Windows server on AWS, at least six months back, I knew that it was pretty costly. I did not check six months from now, but six months back, I remember I was doing a POC for a company and their cost came down almost 25% when they took their IIS and SQL server into uh, Microsoft, right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so here's a good question. I have passed AZ900. Can I do AZ204 training sessions or should I start with? Uh, so you can start with Azure step by step. Uh, see guys, you know, for me certifications, you are doing AWS certification or Azure certification. More than that, you know, my perspective would be that, can you really go and host Azure applications? Can you minimize the cost of your organization? Can you go and really do hardcore DevOps on Azure or on, on AWS? So I feel that more than certification, I would suggest focus on what tasks you are doing locally now 
how I can do very easily on AWS or on Azure, right? Because see these certifications, it has a past history. Look at those OCP, Oracle certified, certified. What is that? JCP, Java certified. I was an MCSD one time, right? I don't know where those documents are, but what stayed with me is my knowledge of Java, my knowledge of .NET, my knowledge of SQL. And as every developer, I would suggest, forget this AZ-900 and AZ-204. I know that I have a course on AZ-900. You know, so more than certification, focus on knowledge. Okay. Uh, yes, I will be covering. Uh, that definitely be able to look into that route. Yeah. The question here was that, will you focus on cost? I think this is a very good suggestion. I, I would like to take this suggestion. How about putting one topic of comparison of costing? This is as you already told. So I'll, I'll take them. I've taken that. Right. Okay, guys. Uh, I think uh, uh, today, let me not take anything more out here uh, from the next lecture. Uh, my, my goal is to deep dive more into EC2, to deep dive more into uh, storages, right? So my in my next goal, this is my goal out here, to go more depth into EC2. Today, I just created a simple EC2 instance uh, to talk more about the storages of, uh, of Amazon and compare it with Azure, definitely, right? And uh, then we will go towards other things out there, right? Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much. I know that there are many questions still out there. Uh, it's a new year because I'm live at this moment in many platforms, right? Um, it is difficult to do a lot of practicals. Remember, uh, uh, what happens in these classes are, this is just as a as a hint. First, if you look, if I see now, I, I can see more than 90 participants, 67 in this room, 100 in that other room on YouTube, so many people, right? But what happens is, you know, as one class goes ahead, as the next class starts, it becomes boring. Then I see from 70, it becomes 10 and then five, I don't know, like some number it goes into, right? That is where, you know, I see the real people are in the training, right? So must be today is the first day. I want to go light out here. I just showed you a virtual machine. I just gave you a hint what I'm going to do, right? But I'm just making a point here that these trainings, uh, it is about the consistency. For example, look at DevOps we did. Look at as your video, look at microservices we did. As we as the training goes ahead, right, you know, it becomes more and more difficult for me to even to manage things because errors start coming, it becomes boring a lot, right? But what I feel is that a person who sits, you know, till the last lecture, I can 100 percent guarantee you your AWS is done in a very, very advanced and a professional way, right? Let me see any more questions I can take. Uh, we have classic ASP.NET, React, Angular, SQL Server, MongoDB, Azure. I can see one more here. We have Java, EJB, Oracle, AWS, PHP, AWS. Uh, I think this classification is clear. Uh, and you can go ahead and you can uh, you can do the costing. See, there are two there are two different companies, right? Definitely, the costings will change. It it is not. Don't think technically now. Think about that. Two different organizations. Azure is trying to sell his Windows thing, right? And that Amazon is, he does not, he cannot tie up with uh, Microsoft, right? Because they have their own cloud. So he's trying to take the Red Hat Linux and other things together, right? He will create an ecosystem for them. AWS will always be bigger than Azure in terms of size. Why? Because it is covering the whole open source and all the things, right? Microsoft will always be smaller. They will eat some bit of it. They will try to eat some bit of it. They will try to eat some bit of that Red Hat. They will try to make the UI more friendly. They are very good in that, right? But I always think that they will be second in terms of the volume. I think so. I can be wrong. I don't know. It's Microsoft at the end of the day. But I feel that AWS will be embraced more in terms of open sources, right? Both of them have their own area and own thing, right? Yes, you can do. Absolutely. You can use Elastic Bean. Absolutely, you can. Absolutely. But look at the cost. The point here is the cost. There's a good question here. This is a nice question. I'll just take the last question and... I can host ASP.NET Core on Linux. So what? Go for AWS. If you think that, yes, I want to do ASP.NET Core on Linux, from hosting it is good. But then see again for DevOps, what now? Do they have that ecosystem out there to do the build and all, right? So think holistically. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. I know that today's session, I did not try to go very much in depth. But from the next session, we will go more in depth. Thanks a lot. Happy learning. Happy job hunting.
earn more, live more, right? And have a happy life. Thank you.